How does that look? Not, I'm not saying that. <laughs> you get some sense that there's a handful of stocks. Look at that. I mean, you could tie that to the market. Bang. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Commercial Break. I'm Guy Adami. I'm always joined by Tim Seymour. We hope your travels are going well. But, you know, when you're traveling, you got to stay hydrated. Very important. Smart totally. water will get you there. Keep living smart, Tim. Just keep living smart. Uh, look, smart words um, for a guy. You know, you're looking smart today. Is that? That's. It's almost. Um, but it's. It's like a. It's almost. It's like a spring shirt. I mean, like you're. You're kind of. You look like you're often like going off to like a Sunday brunch or something. I like, like in the spring. You know, it's funny you say Sunday brunch. <laughs> apparently, the kids they have something called uh, Sunday drunch, which apparently is a combination Ooh. of brunch and drinking, and that's how you get to that. And it makes them really cool. And, you know, it's funny when you talk about cool. In 1931, this yeah. week in 1931, yeah. maybe the coolest actor of all time was born. Um, can you sort of throw one at me? Let's see how good you are on this one, Tim. This week coolest in 1931. Actor, coolest actor of all time. I mean, uh, uh, leaving aside our Italian brethren, you know, Pacino and De Niro. We've talked about Sean Connery. But I think, actually, this could, you know, it's a little before Connery's time. Um, yeah, I mean, it, you know, I guess it's got, it's guess it's got to be the rebel without a cause, Mr. James Dean, baby. So Jamie Dean, well, Jimmy Dean. now it's interesting. You mentioned <laughs> that, you know, on a prior commercial break, we talked about David Copperfield and David Copperfield, the, the magician. We had the book, David Copperfield by Dickens. And it turns out, you know, Jimmy Dean sausages have nothing to do with James Dean, the actor. It's impossible to believe. And in fact, I, I think Jimmy Dean sausages, I mean, whoever Jimmy Dean is, actually, I think he's a country singer. So with all due respect to uh, our twangy friends from Nashville, um, I, I think he's totally ripping off the man of cool. So so J James Dean, um, you know, died before his time, like so many. Was he actually, was he, was he 27 or was he, you know, the 20s, is he part of the 27 club? I think James Dean was 24 when he passed away. I mean, he lived okay. life, you know. In, in the in the fast lane, as they say, which is interesting because the Eagles, as we've mentioned before, they actually wrote a song in homage to James Dean called, obviously, uh, James Dean. They were so they, the Eagles went through this period where they were really into this country Western stuff. And, and they actually so their Desperado album, they actually went to like a movie set um, and dressed up as cowboys. And if you see that Eagles documentary, by the way. Uh, I, I realize everybody's watching the Beatles Get Back documentary right now, which is incredible. That Eagles documentary, I'm going to tell you, is one of the best ones. And what you learn about that, that James Dean song, actually, I don't know if I learned it there, but, but they were good buddies with Jackson Brown. Like, Jackson Brown was sure. basically, like, uh, you know, a, a surrogate member of the Eagles, or he was, a, he was certainly an honorary member. Um, surrogate may be the wrong word. He wrote the song, James Dean. Um, and, in fact, I think it was him and J.D. Souther, who a lot of people don't know, is also one of the big... Uh, Eagles songwriting partners, but that clearly for another show. Um, when I think of James Dean movies, I mean, what, what do we got? We've got East of Eden. Um, we've got Rebel Without a Cause. We've got. Um, That's we've pretty got much it. I mean, those are the two big ones. East of Giant. Eden, which is interesting. Giant. Giant. I think Natalie Wood was in Rebel Without a Cause, but let's just talk about East of Eden for a second because Burl Ives was in East of Eden. Now, if I say Burl Ives to you, what are you thinking? Well, I'm, I, I first want to say Milton Berle, um, but we're not talking about, about Wilty um, uh, or Milty, excuse me. Um, I, I think of the snowman. I think of the snowman on the Frosty, on the Rudolph. He's the narrator. Right. Uh, he's got a great voice, by the way. He tick, I mean, he, he really just tickles those songs out there. He's also, um, wasn't he the snowman on those razor blade commercials? Like he would float around and he'd wipe the shaving cream, like it was like the snow. I know you remember this, but no of one else I who's, who's south of 50 years old even knows what the heck we're talking about here. Anyway. Yeah, and I, and I don't, listen, I don't think you should be using an electric razor. I find you get a much cleaner shave with the old standby razor blades, but that's probably another commercial break. But Burl Ives, he was obviously the narrator, and he sang the great song Silver and Gold. When I hear that song, I immediately think of the round little snowman in Burl Ives. Interesting, by the way, in the world that we live in where 
uh, you know, the price of Bitcoin, the price of the dollar, interest rates. I mean, people have forgotten about silver and gold. And if it was five years ago, this is all we'd be talking about right now in the investment world. Um, but I want to talk about Rebel Without a Cause. And I want to talk about N Natalie Wood, who, who, who is one of my faves. Uh, I'm just going to say that for folks out there. Um, uh, now, James Dean had a penchant for fast cars. And, and what made James Dean this iconic figure for the youth of the time, the dis disillusionment, um, the sense of, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm misunderstood. I think, uh, you know, Guy, you are not misunderstood. I mean, I think you're, you're, you're right out there for people. First of all, he was a great looking guy. He wore the leather jacket, the t-shirt, as you've said, you know, the cigarette packs rolled up in the sleeve of his t-shirt. Just, he was just too cool. I don't think anybody had ever seen anything like that. And he was sort of pre-Elvis. So you think about those guys coming on the scene. Everybody wanted to be as cool as James Dean and then subsequently Elvis Presley. And a lot of people think, actually, that the song by Jan and Dean, Dead Man's Curve, is, is all about James Dean. And it might have been. And, and what a lot of people don't know is actually Jan and Dean, if you don't even know who they are, they kind of were the precursor to the Beach Boys. I mean, they, they and, and actually Brian Wilson was um, wrote a couple songs with, I think, uh, Jan somebody. I don't even know. Jan Barry? I might be Jan Barry. Um, but, but, but anyway, all right. So, is, so if, if there's a dead man's curve out there in the market right here, where, where are we? I mean, what are you worried about? What, what, well, what, what, could, what do you have to hit the brakes on right now? Comes in the form of, I think, higher commodity prices, specifically energy, and then higher interest rates, specifically not only 10-year yields, but two-year yields going higher as well. Uh, financing costs and cost of capital going higher in a meaningful way. So for me, that's what you have to look around the corner for. I'm disillusioned by just what I'm supposed to be looking at in company earnings and, and really what, what's the valuation of a company, what makes a company attractive anymore. Because if you think about where we were in March, April, and May of 2020, we were, we were, we, COVID was on us. We didn't know when normalized earnings were gonna come out. We were willing to let companies have uh, you know, a free run. What we didn't realize is that companies were going to become giants um, and that actually it, it turned into we don't even care what their earnings are now. And in fact, they actually pulled forward a lot of earnings and people thought that this growth period was something that was going to live on forever, even though we all know that COVID was a unique time in history. It was a terrible time in history, but it was actually maybe the best of times for companies. I think we're just disillusioned about what we're supposed to be looking at these days, Guy. I think uh, uh, Cal... Cal was the, he was the rancher in, in uh, East of Eden, or was it Giant? I'm actually now confused by my... my, Cal, my Cal Trask, East of Eden. Now, quickly, I think of East of Eden, I think then Eden, Barbara Eden, I Dream a Genie, Larry Hagman. Larry Hagman was J.R. Ewing in Dallas. But quickly, Tim, as we get out of here, I think of Ewing, I think of Patrick Ewing. Give me your favorite NBA center of all time. Uh, well, it's interesting because, you know, you, you mentioned Ewing and we, you know, at one point, I guess, in, in another commercial break, we were talking about, uh, we were talking about magic. I mean, look, I, I, what, what's really ironic is that Shaquille O'Neal, who was drafted by the Orlando Magic, um, actually was not even considered to be the best prospect on his LSU uh, basketball team back in the late 80s. It was Stanley Roberts, who was supposed to be the greatest center of all times, who ultimately was drafted by the Magic, I think a year or two ahead of the Shaq, didn't become the greatest center. When you say Dallas, by the way, I think Victoria Principal, and I think poor Andy Gibb. Um, I also think of Matt Dillon, who was, who was Dallas in the Outsiders, Pony Boy. And I think of the state of Texas. I think it's hot in Texas, which means you got to stay hydrated, which means you got to drink smart water. you got to live life smart, Tim Seymour. We're living it every day and feeling good today on commercial break, somewhere uh, around 6 p.m. or in your hotel room in the airports, wherever you may roam and whatever dead man's curve you encounter. Guy Adami, great to see you. Tim Seymour, Guy Adami, Tim, we are commercial break.